Picture this, you've just finished a project update and now you need to write a client email about that update. You pull up an old Outlook template, you tweak the wording, double check the details and hope it sounds professional. It's a small task, but it adds up over time. Now imagine entering just the key details, project status, next steps and a deadline and your AI model does the rest. With AI models and power apps, you can generate polished, client-ready updates instantly. Let's dive into how this works. In the video today, we build a project update generator in Power Apps that makes writing client updates effortless. Employees just enter key details like the project phase, project updates, and next steps into a simple form. And then with one click, our AI model transforms that input into a polished client-ready email in seconds, saving time and ensuring every update is professional and consistent in your organization. But we didn't stop with just the AI model. We also built in automation using Power Automate to send the email directly to the client all from within our Power App. That means no copying, pasting, or switching between apps. Your users just enter the details, generate the update, store that update in a list, and send it off in an email in one seamless workflow. This app works to take inputs on the left, click a button to generate email, we see the email here, and then we can add in who the email is going to, and we can click the button to send that email directly from the app. You'll wanna start in the Power Apps home screen and navigate to the AI Hub. Once you're in the AI Hub, you're gonna select the prompts capability here. Next, we're gonna to select to build our own prompt. Now here, you'll wanna type your prompt as if you were prompting Copilot or ChatGPT or any other large language model. We write our prompt with text, we make sure we're specific, have exactly what we want, except with Power Apps AI models, we can add our inputs directly into the prompt. So here, we're working on client-facing project management, so I might add something here in my prompt that looks like this. Now that we have our prompt set up, we need to add in our dynamic content or our content from our inputs in Power Apps. So I'm gonna go back to where I first want to add an input and I'll type in a slash here and we can choose whether we want to have text or image inputs from Power Apps and here I'm going to have a text input. Now with our input, we need to name this. So we'll name this client name and here you'll want to include a sample of what your data will look like. For example, we might have a client named Acme Corp and I will add input. Now we'll keep doing this here for the next five inputs. Type a slash, add a text input, name that input, and add sample data. Now that we have our prompt created, we'll wanna make sure that we name our AI model here. So this is going to be our project management client update. And we'll wanna go ahead and test our prompt out. I click test input and wait for my response to generate. Now we'll see our prompt here has a subject line, a greeting line, and then it also has a signature line. Now, if you don't want to include a signature or a subject line, we can go ahead and add this to our prompt here. And now we can go ahead and click test prompt again. Once you're happy with the prompt and the example prompt response that you get, you'll want to go ahead and click save. Now that your AI model is saved, you can use it in your Power App or in Power Automate. Now, I think it's important to note here, we'll allow our user to edit any of the email in case they wanna add any of their own language to it. I can go ahead and exit out of this and I'll go into my Power App. Now that we have our AI model created, we'll wanna go ahead and come into our Power App and add that AI model to our app. So currently here in my project update generator, I have a form with all of my information about the project this is tied to a SharePoint list. I have a button here to save that data to the list and generate the client email. And then over here on the right, I have a send email to and body, and we'll go ahead and set up a send client email button. 
So now what I want to start by doing is setting up this generate client email with our AI model. When I click the button, we're going to want to make sure we're working in the on select property here. And we're going to start by setting um, a variable where we're going to store our AI model text output in. And I'm going to name my variable AI project output. I'll put a comma here and in my value, I'm going to want to use my AI model. Now, in order to add my AI model, I need to come over here into the data tab. I'm going to click add data and I want to come down to AI models and see all AI models. And I want to select the one that we created just a moment ago. Ours is called project management client update. I select that and it will load this AI model into our data. Now I can come back to the tree view and reference that in my on select property here. You call on this AI model by typing in the name of the model, project management client update, and we're gonna use the dot predict option. Once I do this, it's going to populate with all of the names of the inputs that we set up in our AI model. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna add each one of those. Now each one of these is coming from my form here. So for my project name, I know that all of my inputs, I either use the prefix txt or drp for a dropdown or dp for a date picker. And so I know that I'm searching that way. So I search for the text. And to start with, we wanted the project title. I click that. And I want to make sure that I'm selecting just the value from this text input. I go ahead and put a comma, and I'll add all of my other properties here. Once I have all of the values for my AI model set up, I'm gonna go ahead and close the parentheses to that. And in this AI model, we wanna make sure we're getting just the text output. So I'm gonna put dot and select text here. Now I'll go ahead and close the parentheses out. And now we can reference that variable anywhere else in our app. I'm going to go ahead and select the text input for my AI email body. And I want to make sure that I'm working in the value property here. And I'll go ahead and type in the name of my variable. Once I enter the name of my variable here, that will import right here in my app. I go ahead and pop this out. And then I can click the play button to preview the app and test that generator. I'll go ahead and fill in all of my project update information here. Now that I've entered all of my project data, I can go ahead and click on my generate client email button. You can see at the top that my Power App AI model is working. And then over here in my email body, I get a scrollable and fully editable version of this email. Now what we'll want to do is add code in so that we save this data to the SharePoint list. I'll go ahead and exit out of the preview. I'll come over to this button and I'll pop open the code editor. And here I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And I'm going to use a semicolon, which tells Power Apps that we're completing another action here. And I'll go ahead and say submit form and put in the name of my form here and close the parentheses out. Now let's go ahead and test this. I click on the play button. I'll go ahead and click the button one more time. You can see that everything is generating within the preview. Now you can see that there's no item to display here. I come over to my project management list. I refresh the list and we can see here now that we have all of our update information and our email body is ready to be edited. Now, the next thing that we need to do is make sure we insert code here for sending our client email. To do this, I'm going to use a Power Automate flow. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. And I'll go ahead and go over here to the ellipses and select Power Automate. And now we'll need to create a new flow. I'll click Create New Flow. And we're going to create our flow right within Power Apps. I'll click Create from Blank. And you'll see I have my flow name here. I'm going to title this flow Project Management 
client updates. In my Power App here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some inputs. My first input will be a text input. This is going to be our email body. My next input here is going to be an email, and this will be our client email. Now in this example, I'm gonna use the same email subject line in every email, but you could always add another input here of the text type and make that your email subject. I'll click on new step here, and I'm gonna search for the action send an email, and I'll use this Office 365 Outlook send an email. In the to line, we're gonna go ahead and click to add dynamic content, and we'll use the client email here. In the subject line, I'm gonna call this project update. And in the body of the email, we'll use the email body text input. Now my flow is done. I can go ahead and click save here. In this test, I'm going to add my email as the to email so that we can test this. In the client email button here, now we need to code our app to be connected to that automation. In the text property, we'll leave the text property as is. We're gonna go ahead and open the properties and we'll wanna make sure we're working in the on select property. Currently the on select property is set to false. We'll delete that. And then we're gonna search for the name of our automation we just set up. Our automation is project management client updates and we want to use the dot run action. Now in the dot run action, it's going to ask us for our two inputs we set up. The first is the email body. And this email body, remember I name everything with TXT. So I'm looking for that email body here and we wanna just use the value property. I put a comma and now we're looking for the email. This is going to be our TXT client email and we want to just use the value from this. I go ahead and close the parentheses since my flow only needed two different inputs. And we'll go ahead and test this out here. I'll click the play button. I'm gonna leave the AI output as is, and I'm gonna add my email here. Now that I have my email address and my body of my email fully set up, let's go ahead and send the client email. And now I just wait a moment for my email to come in. I can see that I have a new email here. Now I can see that this email is not formatted well, so I may want to go back to my AI prompt and include some HTML formatting that works with email. To add that HTML formatting for our email body, we need to go back into our AI model here, and we'll go ahead and select our AI model and we'll add to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add here that we need to include HTML formatting for optimized for email. I'll go ahead and test the prompt and make sure that I'm getting email formatting. Now I can see in this email formatting that I'm getting headers of each of the structure that I included. So we can add to this and say, don't include structured headings for each paragraph. Now I'll go ahead and click test prompt and see what we get one more time. Now I see this very nice HTML formatting here and we can use this in our app. I'll go ahead and click save. Now that my AI model has been saved, I'm gonna go back into my app. Once we're in our preview, I can see that it doesn't automatically show me a new form. So what I can do if I click the exit out of the preview, I can go ahead and pop into here and I'll go ahead and hit enter, semicolon, and I'll use the reset form option and I'll select my form name. I'll go ahead and open this up and click preview. And now here we have all of our information again. Let's go ahead and add all of the same information to get a new email body generated. Now I'll go ahead and use my new save data and generate email. And you can see that HTML code has been added to our email. 
Now, if your end users are using this solution, they'll need to be aware that these HTML tags should not be changed. And let's go ahead and click this send email option to see the updated email formatting. Now, when I look in my email, I can see that I have a new email that's correctly formatted with all of the line breaks.